When humans designed submarines for free navigation in water, the development of tunneling submarines that could dig through land was also underway. However, the latter was much less well-known, and most people didn't even know that such equipment existed in the world. But it did exist and had a significant impact on people's production and life. Today, let's briefly introduce the Soviet tunneling submarine. The Soviet Union conducted extensive research on tunneling submarines and achieved many technological breakthroughs. As early as the 1930s, Soviet scientists discovered that cutting pressure decreases as cutting speed increases. It's like using a circular saw to cut wood. Although the force of a single rotation of the saw blade is not as strong as the force of a manual sawing motion, faster speed can achieve better cutting ability. At the same time, Soviet scientists observed the tunneling movement of moles through X-ray imaging. They could clearly see how the muscles and bones of moles moved during tunneling. Through observation, they found that moles rotate their front paws left and right, similar to a drill bit, while the excavated soil is compressed against the tunnel wall by the mole's body. The hind legs of the mole provide the propulsion for tunneling by pushing the entire body forward. With these theoretical foundations, the construction of a tunneling submarine began. It was a relatively small submarine with a hard alloy drill bit at the front. It could rotate at a speed of 300 revolutions per minute to cut through debris. The cut soil and rocks were then compacted by a spiral structure surrounding the body, forming a relatively solid tunnel wall. At the rear were four hydraulic jacks, which function like the hind legs of a mole, propelling the body forward. Changing the direction of tunneling was achieved by adjusting the force of the hydraulic jacks, and reversing was accomplished by reversing the spiral structure of the body. This machine was tested in 1946, shortly after the end of World War II, at a location in the Ural Mountains. The results were not ideal. Firstly, the machine could only tunnel at a speed of about 10 meters per hour. Moreover, the design for reversing was not reasonable, as the entire machine only loosened slightly when attempting to reverse, unable to complete the command. More importantly, there was no way to install a power source for the machine. The experimental machine was powered by an external power supply through cables. If it were to be practical, it would have to solve the problem of having its own power source. However, underground movement lacks air, making it impossible for internal combustion engines to operate. Additionally, the issue of providing for the crew also needed to be considered, which could not be resolved at that time. Although the initial attempts were unsuccessful, the related theories and technologies still played a role in people's production and life, particularly in pipeline laying and drilling fields. The problem of power source found a breakthrough with the maturity of nuclear energy technology. In 1964, the Soviet leadership ordered the construction of a nuclear-powered underground submarine called the Battle Mole. This was a practical tunneling submarine, measuring 35 meters in length, 3.8 meters in diameter, with a crew of five, and the capacity to accommodate 15 soldiers and one ton of ammunition and supplies. The technical secrets of this submarine are still classified by the Russian side to this day. What we know are only some widely circulated claims. The submarine is powered by an onboard nuclear reactor, using a metal-cooled reactor and liquid lithium metal for heat transfer. It can generate temperatures of 700 degrees to 930 degrees, which, along with the immense power of the drill bit, can destroy rocks and soil layers ahead. Therefore, the submarine can maintain a stable forward speed even when encountering hard obstacles like granite. The tail of the submarine is designed with mechanical legs that push the submarine forward during movement. At the same time, the submarine also compresses the crushed and melted rocks and soil in all directions. After cooling, it forms a glass-like lining inside the tunnel. By using this method of tunneling, the battle mole achieved a speed of 7 km per hour. If it could truly be realized, it would have very important practical applications. It is said that the Soviet Union planned to secretly transport the battle mole to a coastal location in California, release it, and quietly drill into the mainland, setting off a nuclear bomb attack beneath a city or other important target, causing destruction similar to an earthquake, with the enemy believing it to be a natural disaster. Research on the battle mole was discontinued in the late 1960s because it faced too many technological challenges that couldn't be overcome. Even today, it is unlikely that any country could truly achieve it. 
To this day, humans have not successfully deployed a mature tunneling submarine. However, the related explorations have not been in vain. Who can say that when we are constructing subways, railway tunnels, and other engineering projects today, we are not using some of their technology or technical concepts?